Hi everyone, I thought I'll do a quick video. So Rocco and I um, went motorbike accessory shopping and we quickly popped into Honda A1 and they had the Honda CRF 300 rally on the floor. And I actually got to sit on the bike and um, yeah, get a feel of the bike. And I decided to put a deposit down on the bike. Um, it's The bike has been on my radar for quite some some time and um, it was a bit of an impulsive decision they said I'll be able to get my full deposit back if I decide not to take the bike but that just means I have my name on the shortlist um, that I expecting stock in June. I thought I'll share a few differences between the KTM and Honda because of course I'm currently own a KTM 390 Adventure and I wanted to do a bit of a comparison to inform my decision making and I thought I'll share it with you guys. I did a quick Google search to get these stats so yeah let me know if I got anything wrong. So first of all um, price is a massive factor for me. I don't want to pay a lot of money for bike like i would be very very keen to get a ktm 690 or husky 701 but they are just way too expensive especially because i might decide to keep my ktm so yeah i can't buy a second bike because that costs close to twenty thousand dollars price wise the ktm 390 adventure 2022 model costs around ten thousand two hundred and fifty and the honda is slightly more expensive at ten thousand four hundred not a big difference there when it comes to the weight of the bikes there's a massive difference the ktm 390 weighs 177 kilograms and the honda comes in at 153 so that is a massive difference it's almost 25 kilograms so that is half of what i weigh and that is going to be a major factor when i decide to actually go through to buy this bike i need a lighter bike i'm not a very strong or big bolt so i think 25 kilograms off a bike would make a massive difference for me Ground clearance, I always complain about the KDM's ground clearance. I bump my bash plate a lot. I need to choose where I ride um, very carefully. The KTM has ground clearance of 200 millimeters, whereas the Honda has a ground clearance of 285. That's a difference of 8.5 centimeters, and that is a significant difference if you're riding off road and doing technical tracks. Like, I just feel like I wouldn't have that in my back of my head, knowing that, oh, I might bash my bash plate, I need to decide where I'm gonna ride. It's a massive factor for me. Um, Seat height, uh, I am 1.55 centimeters, not sure how much that is in feet, but I am very short. I have limited options when it comes to motorbikes and the KTM 390 Adventure standard seat height comes in at 855 millimeters. Whereas the Honda standard seat height is 894 millimeters. When it comes to the KTM, you can't really lower the seat, but you can lower the Honda seat. You can buy aftermarket lowered seats and they can lower the seat height to a maximum of 60 millimeters. Now that is a significant drop in seat height. And on top of that, you can get a lowering link for the Honda. You can get various types. They can lower the bike between 30 and 40 millimeters. Whereas you can get a lowering shock for the KTM. I did get a KTM lowering shock. It was, I thought, ridiculously expensive for the change it made. It wasn't significant at all. I think because the seat is so wide, I didn't really notice the difference. But they say the shock lowers the bike 20 to 30 millimeters, but really I didn't notice 
a massive difference there. All up, you can lower the Honda by 100 millimeters. Now that is significant because that gives you an overall seat height of 794 millimeters versus the KTM. If you install the lowering shock, the seat height will be 825. So that is a difference of just over 30 millimeters lower the Honda if you get a lowering seat as well as a lowering link. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get both a feet on the ground but because the Honda sags a lot and it has a narrow seat I can only hope that I can tip it out on both sides. Then just quickly touching on the adjusted ground clearance should you put a lowering link or shock in the bike. The KTM will have a ground clearance of 170 millimeters whereas the Honda will still have a very good ground clearance 245 millimeters and just to put that in perspective uh, Morocco rides a KTM 790 Adventure and that has a ground clearance of 263 millimeters so very close power to weight ratio now this is I guess the downside of the Honda, getting a Honda versus the KTM 390. KTM just have that fun factor. A Honda wouldn't be able to compare with that smile that a KTM puts on your face. It's almost a 30% power difference between the bikes. And I'm not too sure how that's going to impact my riding. I guess when you're riding tracks and you're riding slower, that's probably not going to have any impact but if you on the road and just maybe at a higher highway speeds that might um, have a difference there. Wheels, we all know the KDM has a very small front wheel, cast iron tube less, whereas the Honda has tube spoke to wheels the front there with the 21 inch which is very exciting i believe that would make a difference while riding technical tracks abs also the reason why i got the kdn 390 as my first bike is because of the technology it offers it has switchable lean sensitive abs so if you begin a rider that can save you in situations whereas the Honda only has on or off-road ABS. Traction control, KTM has lean sensitive traction control. I guess there's two sides to the KTM's traction control, the 390, the current software I'm running, you need to put the traction control off every single time you stall the bike. That is so annoying but when you begin a rider on the road it saves you. I know it saved me a few times going into corners and I guess the slipper clutch also plays into that when you choose the wrong gear so both of the bikes have slipper clutches they say the Honda has a very light clutch which is amazing I don't want a stiff clutch that would be just too hard to manage so in summary I love my KTM I don't think I'll sell my KTM soon even if I do decide to get the Honda I'll keep my KTM and make sure the Honda is the right bike for me I know I'll be able to sell the Honda and very easily there's stock shortages so yeah even if I do upgrades I'll probably get my money's worth but yeah the Honda is really appealing to me it will have a higher ground clearance lower seat height bigger front wheels like it just offers that more off-road type of advantages that i'm after so if i've missed anything or if you have any comments that i should think about before making the decision let me know it's not an easy decision to make and i am nervous about getting a new bike um yeah thought I'll share the differences that I've picked up on, especially looking at the two bikes from a short rider perspective. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Bye.